So, let us begin this lecture. So, in this lecture, we will prove uh, Ulysses lemma, which is a uh, rather amazing result, as you will see. x be a normal topological space so recall what normal meant uh, it just means that given any two disjoint closed subsets we can separate them by disjoint open subsets let a and b be disjoint closed subsets then there is a continuous function f from x to 0 1 such that f of a is equal to 1 is equal to 0 and f of b is equal to 1. Okay. So, we saw that this happens in the case of metric spaces when x is a metric space and there we saw such an f, we constructed such an f very easily and uh, for a general normal topological space it is far from clear why there would exist any non-constant continuous function. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. so let us before we begin the proof let us make a small observation. Uh, so, suppose we have such a continuous function right f from x to 0 1 with f of a is equal to 0 and f of b is equal to 1 right. So, then for each q in 0 1 intersected rationals uh, we get the set u sub q that is defined to be f inverse of 0 comma q right. this is an open subset of x. Right. And uh, okay, this is an open subset of x which is contained in x minus b, right? Uh, because it cannot contain any point of B because all points of B go to 1. So, if it contained any point of B that would mean that the image of this u of q would contain 1, but that is not possible because the image of u of q is contained in this interval 0 comma q. Okay. And also note that if q 1 is strictly less than q 2, and uh, these are rational numbers in this interval, this half open interval, then obviously u q 1 is contained in u q 2. Right. Moreover, we will also have f of u q 1 closure which is contained in f of u q 1 closure. Uh, so, f of u q 1 is contained in 0 q 1, this implies f of u q 1 closure is contained in 0 q 1, which is contained in 0 q 2. q 2, which will imply that uh, 
uq1 closure is contained in uq2 right so thus so what we conclude is if q1 is strictly less than q2 and both q1 q2 are in this interval then we have u q 1 is contained in u q 1 closure is contained in u q 2 right. So, motivated by these by this observation to prove the theorem we begin by constructing such sets. Okay. So, uh, so let us this was a remark and now let us begin the proof of Urison's lemma. So, since A and B are disjoint, closed subsets, so this implies that A is contained in x minus B and we define this to be u1, this is an open subset. Okay. So, using the lemma proved in the previous class, proved in the previous lecture, so let us just recall that lemma, that lemma said the following, x is normal topological space, a contained in w, a is closed, w is open implies there exists V open and A is contained in V is contained in B closure is contained in W. Right. So, using the lemma proved in previous class, we get that A is contained, we can find a set U0, so that A is contained in U0, is contained in U0 closure, is contained in U1. Okay. So, now uh, step 1. So, as q intersected 0 1 is countable, we may index its elements um, using the set of natural numbers. Q is equal to q i's right, for i greater than equal to 1 and further we may assume q 1 is equal to 0 and q 2 is equal to 1. Okay. So, we have defined u q 1 which is u q which, which is u 0 and u q 2 which is u 1 right. So, inductively we will define u q j for each j greater than equal to 3, right. So, let us do this. So, let us assume that we have defined u q i for q i in q 1, q 2 up to let us say q r. 
So now uh, we have this is 0 which is our q1, this is 1 which is our q2 and let us say q3 is here, q4 is here, q5 is here and let us say qr is here and let us say there is some qi here. Okay. So, when we take our qr plus 1, it is going to uh, qr plus 1 is different from all these qis. So, it is going to lie qr plus 1 between two of these. Okay. So, there is a unique, so there are unique, unique i comma j such that uh, q r plus 1 lies between q i and q j. Right? So, take u q r plus 1 to be an open subset. It satisfies u q i is contained in u q i closure is contained in u q r plus 1 is contained in u q r plus 1 closure is contained in u q j. Yeah. So, we can do this using the lemma. We can do this using the lemma. So, I should have said here that assume that we have defined u q i such that if q i is strictly less than q j, then u q i closure is contained in u q j. So, uh, because we have inductively, so this is true for uh, r equal to 2, yeah, and so we proceed like this. So, note that for uh, we have this inclusion because of our hypothesis, and then using the lemma, we can find a qr plus 1 which satisfies this, okay. Uh, so, proceeding in this way. in this way, we would have found sets, open subsets, open sets u sub a for a in 0 1 intersected rationals such that If A is strictly less than B, then U sub A closure is contained in UB. Okay. So, this we inductively uh, construct a sequence of open subsets. Okay. So, this completes step 1. Step 2 is for P strictly less than 0, define UP to be empty. Right. And for p strictly greater than 1, define u p to be x. Right? So, p strictly greater than 0 and p in q. For p strictly greater than 1 and p is in q. So, now we have defined for all rationals. open sets u sub a such that if a is strictly less than b, then u a closure is contained in u. Okay. So, next let us go to step 3. So, given an x in x 
denote by s sub x to be those rationals such that x is in between. So note that if P is in Sx, then for all Q greater than or equal to P, we have Q is also in Sx. Okay. So why is that? Because as X belongs to U P which is containing u p closure uh, ok so let me just say for all t q strictly greater than q that obviously holds for p which is contained in u q right ok so we will use this observation later so let us just keep this in mind yeah so now using this we define a map f from x to r by f of x is defined to be infimum p in s x so we just take the infimum of all elements in s of x right and define that to be s x and define that to be f of x so by so define a map infimum of the elements in sx right or in other words the infimum of elements in Sx. Right. Uh, so we need to check the following. So this is our candidate for the function, and we need to check the following. One f of x is contained in 0, 1, 2, f of a is equal to 0, 3, f of b is equal to 1, and 4, f is continuous. So, let us check these one by one. Uh, so, let us prove one. So, let x in x uh, if a is in q and a is strictly less than 0, then recall that we defined that u sub a is empty. Right? So, thus a does not belong to s sub x. Right? So, uh, in other words, r is 0, no rational which is strictly smaller than 0 is in s of x right so this implies that infimum of this is has to be greater than or equal to 0 right so this implies that f of x is greater than or equal to 0 for all x and x okay so similarly if a is in q and a is strictly greater than 1 then uh, then u sub a is equal to x and so uh, every such a is in s x right so we have 1 over here and no matter which rational we take that is in sx yeah therefore when we take the infimum when we take infimum every rational which is larger than 1 is in sx so when we take the infimum 
this implies that the infimum is less than equal to 1. Okay. So, this shows that f of x belongs to 0 1. So, this proves 1. right? Uh, so, next let us prove 2. So, to prove to prove 2 we need to show that f of a is 0. right? So, if x is in a then x belongs to u 0. right? So, remember we had this is our a and sorry this is a and this is b and the complement of b was defined to be u sub 1 and inside that we chose u sub 0 which contains a so that its closure is also uh, contained inside u sub 1 right then if x is in a so we have x belongs to u 0 so this implies that 0 belongs to sx right but now we know that the infimum cannot be less than equal to 0 right so uh, thus f of x is less than equal to 0 right because f of x is the infimum of all elements in sx and 0 is in sx therefore the infimum is less than equal to 0 so this forces that f of x is equal to 0 right so uh, this proves 2 let us look at 3 uh, if x belongs to b uh, then we claim uh, s of x is contained in 1 comma infinity intersected with q right so in other words s of x does not contain any rationals less than equal to 1 uh, so why is that if uh, if not then there exists a rational p such that p is less than equal to 1 and p belongs to s of x right so if p is equal to 1 is equal to 1 then we get uh, 1 belongs to s of x which implies x belongs to u 1, uh, but u 1 is by definition x minus p, right, which is not possible. As x belongs to b, right. So, thus p is strictly less than 1, right. So, in this case we have u p closure is contained in u 1 right and uh, so again again if x belongs to u p then x belongs to u p closure which is contained in u 1 so which is not possible for the same reason. So, thus S sub x is contained in 1 infinity intersected with q right? and therefore, the infimum is going to be greater than or equal to 1. So, this implies that the infimum of S of x is greater than or equal to 1 which implies that f of x is greater than or equal to 1, but f of x lies between 0 and 1. So, this implies that f of x is equal to 1 for x and b. Right? So, we have proved the first three conditions. So, finally, we just have to show that f is continuous. Finally, we show that f is continuous, right. So, it suffices to show that for any two rationals, C comma D 
uh, with C strictly less than D. The set F inverse C comma D is open in X. Right? Because intervals of this type C comma D with C strictly less than D and Bose and rational form a basis for the topology on uh, on the interval 0 1. Right? So, therefore, we will show that for any two rational C and D this set is open. Right? Uh, so, suppose x belongs to f inverse of c comma d. Okay? So, then choose rationals p and q such that c is strictly less than p is strictly less than f of x is strictly less than q is strictly less than d. Right? So, we will show that. So, we will show two things. One, x is in u u q minus u p closure and 2 u q minus u p closure is contained in f inverse c d. Right? So, let us try to prove these two things. Uh, okay. So, as f of x is equal to infimum of s sub x, which is strictly less than q, uh, this implies that there exists q 1 in s of x with q 1 strictly less than q, uh, which implies that x belongs to u q 1, which is contained in u q. Right? So, this implies that x belongs to u q. Similarly, as p is strictly less than f of x, which is equal to infimum over all elements of S x, this implies that there exists a rational p 1 such that p is strictly less than p 1, uh, which is strictly less than infimum of elements in S x. So, this implies that p 1 does not belong to S x, this implies that x does not belong to u p 1, uh, but we have u p closure is contained in u p 1, this implies x does not belong to u p closure. Right? So, thus x is in u q minus u p closure. Okay? And this is an open subset which contains x right? and next we will show that this open subset is completely contained inside this f inverse C d. So, for every point that would mean that for every point in f inverse C d, we have found an open neighborhood of that point in x which is completely contained inside f inverse C d which will mean that f inverse C d is open. So, next let us prove that uh, u p minus u q bar is contained in f inverse C d. So, let us take if y belongs to u q minus u p bar this implies that y belongs to u q, uh, which implies that q belongs to s sub y, uh, which implies that. So, q is in s sub y, therefore, when we take f of x, which is equal to infimum of elements in s sub y, this is going to be less than equal to q. Right? So, uh, similarly, uh, y does not belong to u p closure, which implies y does not belong to u p, uh, which implies p does not belong to s sub y. Uh, so, what this means is that, so we have p here, right. So, uh, so if s sub y contained anything which is any q which lies over here, then recall that, okay, so let me call this p prime. If s sub y contains some p prime, which is uh, strictly less than p, then
then recall what we have proved here, we had seen here, right. So, since S sub y would contain, since S sub y contains p prime, it would contain all rationals which are larger than p prime. In particular, it will also contain p. So, using this property of S sub y, right. So, therefore, it will follow that uh, S sub y, it does not contain any p prime which is uh, smaller than p. That means, S sub y is completely contained in this region, right, which means that infimum of S sub y which is equal to f of y is going to be greater than equal to p, right. So, thus we have proved that if y belongs to u q minus u p closure, this implies f of y, sorry this should have been f of y, f of y lies between p and q, right. So, this implies that u q minus u p closure is contained in f inverse of c commodity, right. So, this proves that f inverse of c comma d is open, right. So, this proves that that f is continuous which completes the proof of this theorem. And what is the corollary, which is really the moral of Urison's lemma, is that on a normal topological space, continuous functions separate disjoint closed subsets. Uh, so, in this sense, there are lots of uh, continuous functions on a normal topological space. So, we will end this lecture here.